I S U P K. Hey, Shalom, man. This is Priest Kevin Gondoha with the I S U P K. On the command of Johnny Yahana in California, man. To all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You're going to learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Shalom. We want no cowards in our camp. Shalom, DC, we're the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, shot up 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under Commander General Yohanna. Since 1969, we've been teaching the truth of the Bible. And the truth of the Bible is that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true Jews according to the Bible. And the reason why we're teaching our truth is because the oppressor is the devil that the Bible speaks of. He is hiding your true identity from you. We, we, everybody has a Bible. Most people have a Bible at the foot of their bed. Most people have heard of the Bible. Most people quote the Bible, but don't know actually what they're quoting. The church teaches us lies. They have always taught us lies, and it's only because of one reason. We learn the scripture from the oppressor right. to keep us in slavery. Right. So we believe the lies that they teach us. And one of the biggest lies that they teach is that the law is done away with. You can go ahead and ask any Christian, any Catholic, how do you get to the, get the kingdom of heaven? Every one of them will say some arbitrary thing, like believe in God, trust in Jesus, and maybe a few of them will say don't sin. But they don't know what sin is. The reason why they don't know what sin is is because they've been listening to their slave master. They listened to the oppressor that taught us for 400 years to be good slaves. And the reason why they taught us to be good slaves is so that we cannot be on top. That's the only reason. They want to keep their foot on our neck so that we would, be, we would build their kingdom and they will be in heaven while we live in hell and teach us that once we die and follow their rule that we can get the kingdom of heaven. That's a lie. None of that is biblical. And I'm about to tell you right here. Read, read what you got. Come. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27. Matthew 5 and 17. He's going to get it right quick. That's right. Chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. He said, this is Christ speaking. This is Christ speaking. Anybody who knows the Bible knows that Christ is our Savior. The words that are written in this Bible that Christ is speak are written in, in red. What color are these words? Red. These are red letters saying that Christ, our Savior, has say, is saying something. And whatever, whatever he is saying is important. Anything he says, no matter how mundane you may think or that the pastor may teach you is mundane or a little, it is very important. Read that from the top. Come, come. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. He didn't come to do away with the law. What Christian pastors teach us that we that the law is done away with. We don't need the law. The law is too hard to do. That we cannot do it. Only he can do it. That's a goddamn. That's a lie. That's right. He says, "Think not what I have. I have. I am come to destroy. Uh, Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Think not that I've come to destroy the law to do away with it. What? Destroy the law. Or the prophets. Or the prophets." Think not that I've come to destroy the law. What Moses had, had passed down to the children of Israel, think not that I've come to destroy the law or what the prophets had said. 
people tell people, Christians in general don't know what, what this Bible is all about. Right. People, they think that Christ was teaching his own thing. When Christ was on the scene, he was teaching out of the Old Testament. Right. He was teaching us the law. The, the New Testament wasn't written. It was being written as he was teaching. So what was he teaching? He was teaching the law. And the law gave us specific guidelines and rules on how to live our lives according to God. How, how we are all to love one another according to God, not according to our beliefs or our feelings. Keep going. I am not come to destroy. I am not come to destroy what the prophet said or what the, what, what the law has said, but, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. He's come to fulfill. Christians don't even know what that means. He's come to fulfill. His work is not done yet. His work is not done yet. Keep going. For verily I say unto you, for surely I say unto you, whatever I'm about to say, this is about to happen. So take heed. What I said earlier, whatever he said means something. For surely I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, till heaven and earth pass, we, see, we look up in the sky, we still see the stars, the sun, and the moon. That's still here. We look around, we see the earth. We see trees growing. We see buildings being raised. We see tornadoes and fires consuming, consuming the earth right now as we speak. But the earth is still here. It says, what? Read it from the top. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass, we are still here. One jot, one jot, or one tittle, or one tittle. The jot is a, is a dot of an I, or the tittle is a slash of the T. Not one jot, or one tittle, not one small thing, shall in no wise pass. Shall in no wise pass. What does that mean? Now, till heaven and earth pass, Nothing shall pass by the law. That means you are ought to, to obey the law from now until the end of heaven and earth. And that's coming from Christ. If you, if you call yourself a Christian, Christian was supposed to mean be Christ-like, the follower of Christ. He's telling you right here to keep the law. He's telling you to keep the law. So why are you not keeping the law? Most of us... When I, I remember when I wasn't even, uh, when I didn't know the truth and I was a Christian, I didn't know what the law was. I didn't know what, what, what to obey and what I was breaking and what I was following. I didn't know. You want, and I was in church. I was going to church all the time from sunup to sundown on Sundays and a few times during the week trying to study the Bible. But in that study, we learned nothing. We didn't know that the law is still in effect now. Right. We didn't know. All we knew, all we knew as Christians was that there was only 10 commandments. The Bible doesn't say there's only 10 commandments. It's not, it's not only 10 rules. You think it takes only 10 rules to rule a nation? You don't even have 10 rules to rule your household. What makes you think there's only 10 rules to rule a whole nation? That's asinine, that's stupid. Right. We believe stupidity because we believe our oppressor. Right. Our oppressor is teaching us nonsense. It's teaching us nothing. It's teaching us death. Because breaking the law, that's what it is. For the wages of sin equals death. And that's what our oppressor is teaching us. Right. He's teaching us death. This book, the prophets, Christ was teaching us life. Is teaching us life. And the prophets, the priests are still here doing the work of what Christ, what Christ did in those days until he returns. Keep going. Come. From the law till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. Everything is not fulfilled in the law. There is still more to come. There is still more to come. Drop that. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and, fit and 1. I'm going to tell you what, what are the, uh, what the, what the Most High told us about the law. If anybody knows anything about the Bible, Deuteronomy tells us, it, it brings us the law. What happened was Moses told Pharaoh to let my people go. We didn't listen to him. Ten, there was 10 plagues that were placed upon Egypt. Pharaoh got, got you know, fed up. He was like, all right, 
Y'all take yourself, y'all go. Long story short, Pharaoh reneged on his on what he on what he said pledge he was gonna do, and the most high killed his whole army. When we were in the wilderness, the most high gave us rules, laws, and regulations on how to govern ourselves. Because we were in captivity, we didn't know what in the world, we didn't know how to be a people. We've been in captivity so long, even till today, we don't know how to treat our own brother. We don't know how to treat our sister. We don't know how to, how to love ourselves. So the Most High had to give us laws written down so that we can always go to it instead of word of mouth. Because if, if anybody was a child and they played the, the little game called telephone, if you line up 10 kids or 10 adults, it doesn't matter, and you say one thing to one adult, and you tell that person to pass it down to the next person. Pass that down to the next person. By the time you get down to the 10th person, it may be something totally different. So the Most High, in all his wisdom, told him to write this down. Do not misconstrue my words. Let the people know now and forever that they are supposed to do this. Read what it says. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. That means it's definitely going to happen. It will happen. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently. If you listen, not only if you listen, but if you listen earnestly with all your heart, like you really want to do it, like a fat kid loves cake. If you really want to do it, if you listen diligently and you hearken unto the until the voice of the Lord thy God. If you listen to what he's telling us right here, diligently, constantly, consistently, if you do this, to observe and do all his commands. To what? To, uh, to what? Do all. To observe. To observe and to do all. And to do, to, to listen and to do. To listen and to do. Not to listen and, all right, well, I'm, I'm just going to do my thing because Pastor told me all I have to do is pray over this pork and, and, and we, we good to go. Pastor said all I have to do is pray over this, this, uh, this, this shrimp whatever and, and we good. Nah, it says to observe and to do. And to do all. This command. To do half of them. All. Just a little bit. All. Just the ones I like. All. To listen and do all his commandments. All of his commandments. He didn't say just to do a little bit, just the ones you like, just the ones that are easy, just the ones that are convenient to you. He told you to do it all. And the reason why he told us to do it all is because, like I said before, the scripture says the law is life. This brings us life. Some of the things are really easy to do. Some of the things, are, as a matter of fact, the scripture says all are not grievous. We're going to get that in, the, in a few. But it is not hard to put down the ham sandwich. It is not hard to not holler at your brother's wife. It is not hard to not sell drugs to your people or to sell drugs at all. It's not hard to do that. It's, not, it's easy. Don't do it. All this stuff is easy, but it's hard right now because we're in captivity. And for 400 years, we've been learning from the oppressor to do all what the Most High said not to do. So now we hook like a fiend on Christianity, when Christianity is the poison that, that is killing us slowly. All they had to do was teach a few people, and those few uh, those few people who are, who are good talkers, who are good speakers, like T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar, made good slaves for, out of us. That's all they had to do. And now they can just stand back and watch us scream Black Lives Matter. Why? Because Christianity, in a nutshell. If we just put down that wooden cross, if we put down that, that stone, and follow what the law says to follow, what, what will happen? <laughs> and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. Again, to observe and to do all his commandments diligently, consistently, 
throughout time, which I command thee this day, which he's telling us to do. He's not asking. God is not, God is a man of war. God is no sissy little lily livered thing being that he's begging you to do something. He's commanding us to do what he wants us to do. Right. We have no option. There is no option to do what we think we should do. The scripture says he commanded us to do. Why? Because God is a man of war. If you don't listen to a man of war, you will be cut off point blank, period. That's it. There is no coming back from that. Until Christ, that is. Keep going. That the Lord, thy God, will set thee high above all nations. He said, if, if we listen to him, after this commandment, he's going to set us on high. I, I made a statement earlier. I said that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true Jews, true Israelites, according to the Bible. If you look at society today, who's running this country? Who's running cities? Even in heavily populated areas of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're not even running those parts of the city, those parts of town. Who's running them? It's not us. It said if we actually listen and do what he commands, he's going to set us on high. We ain't on high. We live in slums. We live in barrios. We live in a reservation, AKA concentration camps. And we turn a blind eye to our brothers and sisters suffering. We have children, Hispanic children on the border right now, drinking out of toilet, toilets. They drinking the water from toilets, sleeping in cages with aluminum foil for, for cover, for blankets. We on top? How are we on top? That shows you who the true who the true Israelites are. That shows you. It says if we keep the law that he commanded us, we will be on high on top of every nation on earth. Drop down to 15. Let's see what verse 15 says. If you read from 1 Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, 1 through 14 is going to tell you how blessed you will be. If anybody knows this scripture, Deuteronomy has 20, uh, 68 verses. Why is it only 15 or 14 of them that's actually blessings? The rest of them, we're about to find out what the rest of them are. Read 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass. This will happen. It shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice. If we hard-headed, stiff-necked, and don't want to listen to our father, to our, to, to a, a man of war, what's going to happen? Of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. Again, to observe and to do, to listen, to comprehend, and then take action and do it. Christian church doesn't tell you to do any of that stuff. Christian church doesn't tell any to do to do any of that stuff because they don't know what in the world they're talking about. Right. They're not but a bunch of a bunch of pimps and whoremongers. And if you if you go into a church that actually has a woman over you, you are in hell. Cut that out. That is not biblical. Trying to find something to follow Hand loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed, so packed, I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes a follower is a soldier Trying to find a good ship Plus when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I'm believing fairy tale Listen well to what I tell No call it can cause pain Something that a rebel knows very well can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.